Yes, we are back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Another glorious edition of Market Mondays live from London. London town. Yes, yes. We just yeah. wrapping up our legendary run out here in the United Kingdom. So first and foremost, man, once again, we got to thank everybody for all the love that we've received since we've been out here. It's been good vibes, positive energy. Um, Shout out to everybody, man. It's too many people to actually name. Yeah. But Dio, we definitely have to. Lord Dio. Dio, that's that's <laughs> that's bro. our that's our guy, man. That's yeah. that's the bro. He opened um, a lot of doors for us. Literally. Yeah. yeah. We, we went to the House of the Lords. Uh, had a full fledged tour. Uh, got to, to head over to the U.S. Embassy for a very interesting conversation about the financial uh, state of Black Americans and Black Brits. So that was pretty dope. And then. At night, he's been opening up every door for us. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. So that's been cool. Shout out to um, Suli. Very, oh. very clutch performance today. Brav, brav. Very clutch performance. And we got to meet a legend today in the, in the game. And that's very rare that you have an opportunity to meet somebody that a literally- few, A few legends. Yeah, we did meet a few legends. <laughs> but um, shout out to my guy, Rio. That's a fact. That's certified. A few legends that are, we're getting them early. You know what I mean? Like we 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 know the stories because we sat down with them, but uh, we're gonna make a lot of people familiar with some people that are doing legendary things that they never gonna forget. Um, so that that's always dope too. Premier League champion. Yeah, Premier League champ, uh, captain of the the national team here in England. Uh, one of the best to ever play on the pitch. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. So um, today's gonna be a dope episode. We have a guest. In case you haven't noticed. <laughs> um, Je- oh, before I say that too, once again, we just want to apologize for anybody that was not able to get into the networking event. Yeah. 2,000 people showed up. The venue was able to hold 30, uh, 350 people. Um, so, you know, it was just crazy. People came from different countries and it was just like, you know, once the word of the mouth spread, like some people didn't RSVP and just came and it was just like a domino effect. Um, but we coming back to an official event, but even before that, we'll, we'll host a free web- webinar um, we'll, we'll talk about some of the stuff that we spoke about inside. We'll talk about, you know, the crypto, some stock stuff, um, for real estate for UK investors, foreign nationals to invest in American markets. So, um, you know, we definitely going to take care of you guys. But once again, wasn't intentional. It was just, you know, one of those nights that was just nobody really could have predicted. It. But uh, we'll be back and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do it the right way for sure. Um, but <clears throat> we have a dope episode today. We have a guest, uh, Jessica. If you know EYL, then you know that she's been on the platform twice. She uh, did a dope episode, and then she did our open enrollment. So this is the trifecta. Mm-hmm. Now oh, you man. have officially been knighted. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So we thought it would be dope. She's out here with us in London. So Ian actually uh, spearheaded this and thought it would be dope for her to come on. And I, I agree with it. Uh, perfect timing, actually, with everything that's going on. So Jessica is, you know... She's a brilliant mind, but a master in the Forex space. Um, so, you know, we're going to have that conversation about, you know, Russia, Ukraine, uh, gold, Forex, how the markets are moving, uh, opportunities, you know, what to stay away from. So this this is going to be a treat. We didn't even advertise this. This yeah. is just a treat. And had a successful event herself. Yeah. Shout out to you. Thank you, Keon Watson. That's a fact. That's dope. Shout out to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, of course, we got the usual suspects. Myself, Troy, Ian. Um, so get into this. But before we start, just some announcements. EYL, big week for us. Uh, my boy, Ruben Harris. Legend. Career <laughs> Karma. Yeah. Um, that is coming out tomorrow. That episode is coming out tomorrow. So Ruben is a super, super intelligent guy um, who is in the tech space. I told you we're going to do a lot of tech content this year because it's important. And he has a tech company where he actually helps people develop uh, like job training skills, but for the tech side. Mm-hmm. And then and then it's job placement into the tech. So that's that's one of the things that, you know, especially in our community, it's like, you know, we make up like 1% of Silicon Valley yeah. and we don't have enough skill set. So he actually put together a company that actually trains people to get the technical skills that they need in a short period of time, like in like a four week period of time mm-hmm. where they can begin working in, in tech field. And um, very interesting. He's, uh, you know, one of these guys that's a brilliant guy. I'm pretty sure he's going to take his company public one day and yeah. have a multi-billion dollar valuation. Um, 
went through the ringer, went through, what was it, Y Combinator? Y Combinator. Yep. He's a Y Combinator alumni. So if you know anything about Y Combinator, that's like one of the most prestigious <laughs> things that you can do in the tech world. So he did that. Um, so super dope informational episode, not only about his company, but about the world of tech, about Y Combinator, about VC funding, seed rounds, all that kind of stuff. So make sure you make sure you check that out, man. That's that's gonna be really, really dope episode. Like I said, we're gonna put more and more content out like that to, you know, get you guys more aware of what's going on in Silicon Valley, because that's where the billionaires are at. That's where the billionaires are being made. So we need to we need to get in there and play that game. Yeah. Um Troy. Yeah, man. Uh, shout out to all, all the Red Panda family. Shout out to all our earners. We want to let y'all know about a great choice if you're looking to bank or invest. Ally is a leading financial digital uh, service company with passionate customer service, innovative financial solutions, and our relentlessly focused on doing it right for both customers and our communities. So get with Ally so you can save, invest, and spend on the things that matter to you most. For everything we need, we're all better off when Ally. Shout out to good folks at Ally. Love them so much. We, we, we got something special. Um, Can I wait? Uh, that that, that uh, we'll be talking about very shortly. Um, so shout out to them. Uh, and shout out to everybody that's been tuning in and doing their research. I know we always say do your own research, but I, I can't, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the people that actually are doing their own homework and actually coming up to us and telling us about the homework that they've mm-hmm. done and they've executed on and have seen the benefits of. So shout out to everybody that's doing all, their own homework. But we got to say the disclaimer anyway. So do your own research. Our content is intended to be used. It must be used for informational purposes only. It's very important that you do your own analysis before making any investment decision based on your own personal circumstances. You should take independent financial advice from a professional in connection with or independently research and verify any information that you find on our show and wish to rely upon, whether for the purpose of making an investment decision or otherwise. This is a message brought to you by the good folks at Earn Your Leisure and the good brother, <laughs> Ian Dunlap, the master investor. Shitty, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> And done clear. Yeah, man's done clear. Um, <laughs> yes. And uh, Big Reef at EY University also. Are you doing book club this week? Book club was actually uh, yesterday. Uh, okay. Power Nine was, I think it was part three. Spoke to G about it. Another, another amazing session. Like, all I got was the fire, 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 fire emojis. Um, great book. And we're working on something special for our people in the book club. Um, yeah. You know, like, when we have a book that is so highly acclaimed, we usually try to get the person who actually is the author of the book come talk to the book club. So... It's in the works, and hopefully we can get it done this time. Yeah, and maybe we can make that happen for Market Mondays also. Yeah. That was <laughs> a real traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, EY University, too, we have that birthday sale that's running, so Troy's birthday, yeah. which is Thursday. Troy's birthday's on Thursday. Wish him happy birthday in the comments. <laughs> Please. And uh, my birthday was yesterday. Shout out to everybody that showed so much love. I appreciate you. Legendary night, too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. We'll pass the torch to Ian to make his announcements. I'm in a given mood. Can I break the internet and announce what we'll give away in Houston? Or you want to wait? Um, wait. Let's wait till we get to. Okay. We get the, okay. Well, we'll wait soon. 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 Um, uh, <laughs> love you guys. I'm packing up, leaving tomorrow. Stock club calls will resume next week. But going from here on out, the dream team will be on every call. No calls will be missed after that. Um, tune into next week. I'm going to let. Uh, the Sniper program be available for free for the first thousand people who tune in. Um, 300 new features will drop for Stock Club March 25th. The Dream Team trading room will be announced April 1st. And then if you go to joinredpanda.com tomorrow, I will send you a link to join our Telegram for Stock Club. And you'll get three picks for free. So I want to get these brothers don't want me to break the internet. <laughs> Stay tuned. Not we, we need it. The internet soon be broken. So, uh, all right. So. Let's get into this. Uh, Ian, how do you want to how do you want to start the conversation? Uh, well, we, we can do it with the four trades to take if the market drops, and then we can adjust. You know, chime in and share. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Let's talk about the, the the four trades that you will take if the market drops or, or falls apart. Yeah. So I want to give everybody a strategy that they can use, and then just can tie it in with forex. But when the market is dropping and everyone is panicking, write these down. I want you to trade the Dow future. The gold future, ZB, which is the bond future, and then crude. So I want you to use 33 contracts on the Dow for 523 points. That will give you a target of $86,295 in one trade. Trade number two is gold. If you trade 10 contracts and do 40 points, that'll give you $4,000. 25 contracts with 20 points on ZB or 20 ticks. 
will give you 15,625. And then 20 contracts with 40 points or 40 ticks on crude will give you 10,000. So when your long-term portfolio is getting beat up, I don't want you to panic. I've told you before, I want you to hold for the long-term. Long-term being five years or 30. But it sucks when your when you know, portfolio is getting beat up and then we're talking about how well everything is going. You can offset these losses. But what I want to do is put these futures trades with the Forex that she trades and she will give you targets as well. So that way you can make money twice off the same asset. So if they're trading in the US 30 gold and crude, what targets would you have so, before? So I kind of want to go in detail of each one because when mm -hmm. it comes to, especially the Dow Jones, like we sell US 30 all the time. So of course we have like certain levels when it comes to Fibonacci, I always use negative 61.8 as mm -hmm. our resistance level, as our reversal. Got you. Always. So anytime you're trading that, you always want to use that as your reversals. But the way it's dropping right now, like we're expecting a minor pullback mm -hmm. and then I'm expecting it to completely fall because the reason is like, it keeps coming to the level of supports. And then they're not holding. We're not yeah. creating new highs. We're yeah. not creating new higher highs. What's happening is all these unintended consequences are happening. And when I first talked about US 30 first drop, and it was, of course, because we were tapering off inflation and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So when we need to taper off inflation, what they're doing is taking money out of the money supply, out of, like, of course, circulation. Yeah. And then what, what happens when that happens is that, of course, interest rates will rise, which causes currency to go up. Yeah. All right. So with that currency, the U.S. dollar has been rising like crazy, but right now we're at this high, high monthly level uh -huh. on, um, on the U.S. dollar. So when it comes to that, you always want to, like, I don't want to give exact levels because uh -huh. the reason being is like our volatility, mostly volatility means uncertainty, right? Uh -huh. But in the foreign exchange market, when you have this volatility, you're able to make such an immense amount of money, so much money yeah. yeah, every day because the foreign exchange market, you have 100 pips to 70 pips that happen every single day, yeah. especially when you're trading like Great British Pound versus US dollar, yeah. Euro versus US dollar. And what's happening right now, especially with this war and with gold, gold is the safe haven. Yeah, Gold is the safe haven. So of course, when there's fear, People put money in gold and people also are putting money into oil. Yeah. Now, I'm expecting, oh, I'm sorry. No, you asked exactly about the prices. Yeah. I am expecting crude oil to go to 110 and 120 mm -hmm. long term. 120. The, yeah. Long term. Okay. If we say, and, yeah. And the reason being, and the reason that I say that is because right now with Russia and what Russia is doing is when you have a limited supply in anything, if we don't have access to something, of course, that's going to cause supply, like our prices are going to go up in value. Mm -hmm. And then Joe Biden has even been telling people to like, watch out for gas prices to go up. Yes. Right. And gas is, it comes from oil. Mm -hmm. Right. So all of these factors are kind of like aligned with one another, but I definitely am expecting oil long-term to go to like 110, 120. Yeah. That's interesting. Crude oil. And so, then they have Brent oil out here. Yeah. Right. 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 So like, and that's interesting because that was pretty much the, 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 the common theme was like, look at, look out for oil, look out for oil. And so we could invest in individual stocks or yeah. that have crude, but this is one of the things we love and that's ETFs. Yeah. And so one of those ones I've been, I've been watching myself was XLE. You know, we love yeah. the spider fund. And so if you look at that and we always tell people the sources that we use. So ETF DB is one of those sites where we actually can see how the, the ETF is performing and the holes inside of it. But the top two holdings, Exxon and Chevron, almost 43% of mm -hmm. the, the assets inside of, yeah. the, of the holdings inside of the, of the ETF. And so that's interesting that you said, if it's going, if oil is going to 120, these are the type of things we should be paying attention to, right? Absolutely. If we want to be, not invest individually into, into oil, but into an ETF, have a safe haven, like I know Rashad loves to do. These are the type of things that, that type of information applied with this information makes sense to be looking as a, as a short-term investment, but also as a long-term one as well. Yeah, absolutely. Because all markets are synonymous. Absolutely. And you can always make money from the market, mm -hmm. depending on what's actually happening in the market. It's actually interesting that you mentioned it's on. Like, of course, I'm not in the whole stocks and positions, yeah, but yeah. even corporate earnings, like that's something that we pay attention to mm -hmm. yeah. when it comes to the foreign exchange market. So looking at what corporate earnings are going to be increasing, especially in this first quarter. I mean, there's always opportunity in disaster. I don't want us to profiteer off of mm -hmm. the lost lives that of, of what's happening inside the war. But if you were to sh short it, the ruble, man, how much money could you said that drop 45 percent? 45 percent yeah, the entire market. So let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about because you know, being out here and I've been in a lot of uh Ubers 
And all the Ubers I'm noticing, they're all listening to talk radio, uh-huh. common theme, and it's all political talk radio. Yeah. So I'm just getting information from being in Ubers. Um, and then, you know, just seeing what's online and reading and stuff like that. So uh, it's obviously, you know, a worldwide issue, but it's, it's hit home here because they're close to the situation. Yeah. Like, you know, like Russia borders, um, part of it, like the NATO, like, you know what I mean? As far as, uh, Ukraine mm-hmm. and Poland and all of these different countries are like right there. And that all affects the EU and that all affects the European continent. Yeah. So I say that to say it's important to educate ourselves and know, and know what's going on as far as this, uh, this crisis that's, that's about to happen or currently is happening. Um, but I had asked you during the networking event, um, how does this affect uh, the foreign exchange market, the commodities market? Like, what is there to look for? Like, what's happening in, in the financial world? Yeah, so in the commodities market, like we trade in the foreign exchange market, we trade commodities. Of course, it's at say USD is the ticker for that. And then US 30. And then we have all commodities. So in regard to oil, as well as natural gas, right? Uh Anytime there's fear in the market, you want to buy commodities, period, point blank. Uh But in the foreign exchange market, particularly the safe havens, the two currency safe havens is the Chef Frank and the Japanese Yen. Uh okay? Now, it was clear as day, as soon as the war broke out, we made so much money just by selling Euro JPY. Two reasons why the Japanese Yen is a safe haven currency. So that means the Japanese Yen is going to go up, but also we're on European territory, which means the Euro is going to drop. So you make money on the trade Euro JPY. Now we actually study each individual economy and then pair them with each other. Uh And that's why price, of course, makes its volatility because of course, different things are happening in different countries at each particular time. But the way that you guys look at, of course, like Apple and stocks Uh of all those things where you're looking at corporate earnings and debt ratios, we're looking at, okay, what's happening in this economy at this particular time? We look at it from a supply and demand perspective. And then we look at it from a um, monetary and of course, economic indicator perspective. Okay. Yeah, and then you see the volume the same. So for futures, uh, the ticker is 6S for the Swiss franc, and the Japanese yen is 6J. So if you trade them both together, you can have two accounts going. Like imagine if you had two options account, and but one of them paid more. One was a premium, one was like normal, mm-hmm. but you're making money on both drops. So if you short US 30 or the Dow and the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen, it makes, I hate to say it, but when the market drops like this, I love it. Because now we're not ranging. We have more volatility. Long term, it helps to stay with the. And some of you are like, "Hey, well, how do you stay in long term when your account's bleeding?" I'm like, "You have to trade. You have to be able to trade through it and maneuver through it." And I'm happy you said that because people are scared of volatility, but in all actuality, like when you just said, if you educate yourself and you yeah. learn how to extract money from the market when you're actually trading, there's so much money to be made. Hey, yeah, mm-hmm. back to back to back to back to back. You know what I'm saying? All of these sale positions that's happening, those are. Like that's money, that's volume going mm-hmm. in an actual direction. Now, of yeah. course, you want to understand multiple time frames. Like you don't want to get so lost on minor structure and yeah. the smaller time frames where you're omitting the bigger picture when it comes, of course, I'm talking about technicals now, but when it comes to like the daily, the weekly, and the monthly, those charts are are very, very important for us for and macro. for us because we need to understand what's the overall movement of what's happening. Right. But our minor structure is what's telling us, okay, this is the right now money. Mm -hmm. And that minor structure is what you're talking about in regards to trading and making money on that day to day basis in regards to like the volatility. What what time frame do you trade off of? So I I look at every single time frame, but I do not do one minute, five minutes or anything like that. So I do my I do a top down analysis. So Mm -hmm. we start with the monthly, then we go to the weekly, then we go to the daily. But the trading time frames, we break down the four hour into the 30 minute. Uh-huh. And then we break down the one hour into the 15 minute because that gives us our overall move for our, we have a weekly move and then we have like, OK, what's going to happen? And then we always trade what we see, not what we think. Uh-huh. So we can have an overall basis of what's going to happen. But until we have our confirmations and our confluences line up, we don't actually execute the position. Sounds mm-hmm. very familiar, right? Stop highest view monthly, then work your way down. Pick one time frame, master that. How many trades per month? I take about two to three trades a week. Weeks, no, okay. So I think two to three three trades a week, okay. but the, the foreign exchange market is so much liquidity yeah, 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 that yeah. pumps through there. Right? But even with all the liquidity, she's taking 12 trades max. Yeah. 
And then that's how like you, you, you don't really lose because you don't take like, it's so much money that comes into the market, but you only take the positions that you're sure about. Mm -hmm. Even though the market's open and everybody wants money, there's so much money that can be made on a day-to-day basis, but that don't mean that you have to actually execute every position. We're not a crackhead for money. The whole Mm -hmm. goal Mm -hmm. in trading is to protect your equity. It's like when I was boxing, the whole goal, keep your hands up. Yeah, right? track yourself at all times. Yeah. Yes, hit without getting hit. The whole goal in trading is to extract money without your money getting all got. All defense. Yeah. So, I mean, it's interesting with all the sanctions and sorry, is correct. Like as we're driving around and we're seeing, you know, a lot of people are protesting against what's happening in Ukraine. We got an interesting question and, and Mike and myself were having this. Somebody was asking, is, is this a good time to be shorting uh, Russian stocks? Mm-hmm. Or are we trading the ruble or are we shorting it? Because obviously when you see an entire stock market drop 45% in a day, which is like, wow, I mean, we can't even fathom that. But like, is this a good time if it w- if we're trying to make trades? The Russian stock market is closed right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, for, like- Look it up. They closed Wow, it. yeah. They well, it, they it was frozen. Trading, right? yeah. yeah, the, the all-time low was $10.34 for RSX. It's at 10.78. We halted. What's, can you explain to them what RSX? Uh, RSX is like their equivalent of their index. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you so how you have VOO for the S and P five hundred, RSX is their index equivalent. So that's the first it. thing I looked at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, 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 hit, it hit its all time low. Yeah, because I mean, it probably would have went to a dollar if they would have frozen. And I think the trading. Yeah, the reason why is because um, sanctions mm-hmm. have been put in place. Heavy sanctions have been put in place on the Russian economy on Russian uh, oligarchs, Mm -hmm. which is the ruling class, like even out here. uh, What team is it? Chelsea? Chelsea, Chelsea, Uh, The owner of Chelsea is a Russian oligarch. Oligarch? Oligarch. (laughs) Um, And they're talking about taking his team, right? Yeah, yeah, so he actually uh, took the notes on that. So um, Rabatovich is is his last name. If you're a Chelsea fan, I'm sure you know, or if you're a fan of Premier League. And so what he is decided to do is he's gonna put, he tried to, uh, put the team into a trust. He was going to hand over the, the mm-hmm. rights to it into a trust uh, because of the sanctions. Now, they said that Ukraine has reached out to him in support, um, and people don't really know how the conversation has gone, but, you know, if they're freezing your assets and you're in a country mm-hmm. like the UK and you're getting your money is tied in Russia, you can obviously see how this, yeah. this could become a problem, and uh, we'll see how that's going to pan out. So how do we, let's take a, let's have a political talk briefly. How do you think this is going to play out? Because um, the economy is crashing. Mm-hmm. Stock market is crashing. They're putting embargoes in place. They're not going to let the, the sports teams play. Yeah, they just got banned. Yeah, yeah they got yeah. banned from FIFA. from FIFA And UEFA. So they they originally, and I think they did it in a few, maybe the prior Olympics or in, in Tokyo, where yeah. they didn't come in as Russia. They were the United Federation of yeah. Russia. And so they were trying to do that with uh, the FIFA, with the World Cup is going to be on um, this summer. And yesterday they ruled like, no, mm-hmm. if you, you can't participate anything with the Russian name. And so they've been banned from that in UEFA. Um, and they got games to qualify for the World Cup mm-hmm. in the next couple of months. So, you know, it's just a shame for these athletes as well. And the oligarchs, they're freezing their accounts all across the world. They're trying to freeze their accounts, um, cancel their passports, mm-hmm. kick, their, kick their kids out of private school. The reason why this now, the reason why the ruling class is so important is that their society is a little different than American society. There's always a ruling class, but they really have like a real ruling class where it's like a select group of people that became tremendously rich uh-huh. um, after the fall of the Soviet Union and like billionaires. So these are like like the guy that owned the Brooklyn Nets mm-hmm. and they own sports teams. And even when we was coming to London, it was like the... Um, the most expensive flat in the world, which they call apartment of flat, 280 million was bought by a Russian billionaire. So they have they have property and they have businesses all across the world in Asia, in Europe, in America. So now to stop their money internationally, because they do a lot of stuff internationally, yeah. but to stop their money internationally, that's going to put a lot of pressure on the Kremlin because the only thing that people really respect in this world is money. money. Yeah. And now when you start to you know play with people's money, it's like, all right, you're taking this too far. Mm-hmm. So that's the theory where it's like, before it escalates into a physical war, let's do economic war. Mm-hmm. So I'll start, Ian, what's your, what's your thoughts on the geopolitical landscape? How do you think this is gonna play out? It's not gonna be good for Russia until China says, hey, um, we're gonna back them. Mm-hmm. This will set the stage for China to potentially invade Taiwan. That's what I'm really worried about. 
at first, I didn't think the sanctions were going to matter, but Biden, I have to admit, I've been hard on the last five, six weeks, swift with this. Like, they kicked off the banking system. Um, like you said, the money, it's a trillion dollars of assets that are frozen. Yeah. Can't, like They said it's unprecedented. 48 hours, I was in, the, I was in the, uh, their cab today, and they were saying, like, Europe, America kind of been soft on, like, freezing the ruling classes' yeah. money for 20 yeah. years. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they was like, in 48 hours, it's kind of unprecedented. Mm-hmm. So it's the level of Switzerland got involved, yeah, which they never do. Yeah. I really hope Russia and China do not team up though. Cause if you even think about like worldwide and how mm-hmm. much like land China owns, mm-hmm. especially in regards to Africa and stuff like that, like that's gonna be insane. It's scary. I, I my personal opinion is that um it, it de-escalates pretty quickly because they're already in negotiation. I um mm-hmm. heard Russia, uh, Ukraine. A diplomat from Ukraine and Russia, they're already in conversations. Yeah. Um, and I think, um, you know, Putin, it was just like a, a, a force of power, flex mm-hmm. of power. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a situation that you can't win. And I don't think China's going to fully just jump in it because it's yeah. probably not going to be advantageous for them either mm-hmm. at this point. Um, so I think it kind of de-escalates. I hope it de-escalates, but I think that if I had to put a bet on it, it will de-escalate like yeah. in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the same day that this invasion happened, there was jets flying over Taiwan mm-hmm. from China. And so, I mean, the time of that, yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't know how coincidental that is, but I don't believe in coincidence. <laughs> it's pretty interesting, with, right? Yeah. yeah, and then China hasn't declared that they didn't agree with Russia's move. So like Russia's like Omar from the wire. Everyone's afraid. <laughs> like he's the bully walking up the block with the gun, but it's like you never. He, they don't have enough power to take down Ukraine. U.S. should have defended Ukraine, but they're technically not an ally, so I get it. The Ukraine is technically... I, I mean, I, I understand Putin's perspective because he feels like so much has been taken from his people and his country that he wants that land back, but it wasn't thought out strategically enough. And then when you have the entire world putting a spotlight on Washington, you to then yeah. attack you, and you know, to win a war, you need allies. Yeah, and like I said, China, they're not stupid. No. Even if they really, really want to back the situation, they're looking at it like he... He's like a mad dog right now, yeah. and the whole world is against him. It's probably not the best time to just publicly link it. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Yeah. yeah, but keep your eyes on China and Taiwan. Also, TSM, we talked about that before. Yes, yes, That's yes. That's my biggest fear is that yeah. they'll invade and take that property over. And once they have it, then what? If they get that chip manufactured, that is a hell of a, you, a you talking move. about. And we used to, I mean, I remember when we were starting to, to do Market Mondays, when we were speaking about TSM, we were like, oh, it's 50% of the world's chips, 50%, 50%. But as you know, the supply chain has dwindled. Uh-huh. It's now like almost sixty percent of the world's uh-huh. chips, and so you can imagine if if a this great country, asset. if this country yeah. even gets invaded, yeah. what that now does to the world supply uh-huh. chain as far as semiconductors. So it's interesting, man. Like these geopolitical issues become real financial issues uh-huh. um, really quickly. But it's also important for people to educate themselves on a, on a broader scale because like everybody's like up in arms about the situation, like da da da. But I mean. Every country has a history. Yeah. I mean, Puerto Rico still is a U.S. territory mm-hmm. without the full rights of U.S. citizens. Mm-hmm. And I used to live in Hawaii, which was actually a real country before it got annexed. Yeah. Not that long ago, like 60, 50 years ago. Yeah, not that long ago. 1945. Yeah, like you just literally took a country, Alaska also, but Hawaii is like a full nation mm-hmm. with kings, a whole monarch system and everything. And America just came in, changed everything, put them under the flag. Yeah. So it's like, we kind of have- Where'd they learn that from? Huh? I said, where'd America learn that from? Grin. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I'm just saying, it's like, you know, it's important to be fully educated yeah, yeah, and know like, sure. like- And that's two interesting points no one is talking about. We'll touch on them quick, but uh, President Sun had a business in one of these countries and also Vitalik of Ethereum is Russian. Yeah. He spoke yeah. out, he spoke spoke out, out. About, about the Russian. He said, even though he's Russian, he doesn't agree with what Russia is doing. Yeah. He'll probably never come back to Russia again. Yeah. Well, he said he said he didn't have to. He's like, well, yeah. Ethereum's neutral. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm not I'm not for this. Yeah. And so my platform is, and then is neutral. Talk about Netflix, what they do with Netflix. Yeah, so Netflix has a decision to make. Um, and I guess they'll they'll make it by tomorrow. But um pretty much Russia has put a, a spotlight on them saying, listen, if you're not gonna spread our shows and I guess our propaganda, we're gonna ban you from the country. Mm-hmm. And so from, for Netflix, I feel like it's a pretty easy decision. If even just from a subscription standpoint, you got a million subscribers in Russia. I mean, you lose a million there. 
Yeah, it won't matter. It's not that, you know, it's not yeah. going to change. Dropping the bucket. Yeah, it's not going to change the scale of the business. But that's interesting. Like, they're looking at a streaming service. Like, mm-hmm. listen, this is, hey, we're going to put this sanction on you. Like, okay. Well, what is important to play, see, now, what Russia does have in its favor is natural resources, mainly oil. Oil, uh-huh. yes. Um, so even being out here, they were saying, like, the prices of gas could double if mm-hmm. once they cut the pipeline off mm-hmm. from Russia. But now this puts OPEC in even more of a, you know, prime position to really manipulate the market however they want. Mm-hmm. So I want to ask Jessica about oil, but first gold. How, I, talk, I talked to you about this. How is, what's the relationship between gold and wars in times of uncertainty? Gold, precious metals, platinum, all precious metals, mm-hmm. platinum, silver, gold, all of them. You need to buy them when there's war. Now, in the foreign exchange market, you definitely want to be careful with your entries, yes. all right? Because right now, gold shot up. Uh-huh. Literally, when when they declared war, got gold literally shot uh-huh. all the way up, and it hit that negative 61.8. Now, I'm expecting a pullback, uh-huh. all right? I'm expecting a pullback up until probably the end of this week, and then I'm expecting it to rise higher, for sure. I wish I had my charts. So yeah, and the market's going to do a dead thing. cap out, which means... <laughs> it's like, there they are. Yeah, yeah. So right there, I know. Point them out. This level, this like, level, like, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, if gold shoots back up, of course, the market is going to taper up and then push back down, which is called a dead cap bounce. We talked about it before. Yeah. So you can play those two in tandem. Yeah. Just tell but anybody that's new, just explain what a dead cap bounce is. Um, it's just when a market shoots up really fast. So like if I go to Rucker and I'll score 58 points, first game, <laughs> I'm not scoring 58 to second. So my average is going to drop down. So the Dow is going to peak up really high and then it'll slide back down. Same with S&P 500. And then gold will take off. Also, you got to look at um, the volatility index. So if we get back to a level of like around 39, 44, that's where the market will start to top top at. But we're at 31 now. It has room to push up. And I know Russia or Vitalik said he doesn't back them, but you have to look and see. What percentage of Bitcoin does Russia own? More than 20%. Google how much Ethereum they own. Mm. Scary. I mean, that's even interesting um, because Bitcoin, mm-hmm. right? The Ukrainian uh, government, they've been receiving funds mm-hmm. through Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. And so people have been sending a, a Bitcoin as a way for them to help them help themselves. Yeah. So is it like cryptocurrency is now a play in this? <laughs> I, I can make an argument that through supporting some of these coins, you are funding terrorism. Mm. Funny you say that because uh, on the a, on a flip side, so 19 Keys put a post up. I just actually um, was looking at it mm-hmm. right before this. And he was saying how uh, somebody from Ukraine, let me actually read it so I don't misquote it. Um, so he, he he took a quote, he took a like a screenshot of somebody that was, in, well, I guess is in Ukraine who tweeted something. He said, my Ukrainian credit cards don't work anymore. I'm safe physically in Kazakhstan but all my savings are gone. Mm. Crypto is the only money I still have. And today I can say without any hesitation, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and NFT are going to save my life while I can't Mm -hmm. come back home. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's interesting Mm -hmm. because uh, 19 Keys have posted it and he was saying how, you know, um, cryptocurrency, uh, you know, the fall of the dollar and all of that stuff. And cryptocurrency is the only, the wave. And mm-hmm. this is something that, you know, moving forward, you can't stop it. And, you know, the whole the whole mm-hmm. thing behind that. So it's interesting that you said that you're funding terrorism yeah. because on the flip side, it's like, mm-hmm. this is my, this is the only thing that saved my life. Even drug dealers in the hood gave out turkeys and... <laughs> Nikki so, Vaughan. So, so if... Do you, think, <laughs> uh, do you think a man smart as Putin would invade emotionally, when people in KGB or Russia are not that emotional, but it looks emotional, I don't think it's the main benefit, but if he can get control of the monetary system through crypto, and now this becomes a way to say, hey, you will have free access to your money and support, that will be a good initiative that he can then push if they then own a majority stake in crypto. Yeah, Like the major assets that we invest in cannot be non-American. You're, you're then funding your competition. Yeah. At that point, it, it was interesting when when we were studying crypto, like 2016, 2017, and I, I just pulled up the privacy coins, and I remember Monero. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and then the knock on Monero was like it was funding the Taliban, mm-hmm. and it was funding like all these type of militias throughout the world, and nobody knew about it because yeah. it was untraceable, yeah. because it was a quote unquote privacy coin. Yeah. And so now they hear that these actual cryptos like Bitcoin are actually 
helping fund a war um, on, on, on the other side that is defending themselves. It's like, this is pretty interesting. Yeah. Like, stop. Like, it's funny how these things go in circles. Can I ask you guys a question? Would you personally fund a non EYL podcast monthly? No. Then why, as Americans, will we fund a non American coin, a non American company? Well, to play devil's advocate, if you can say funding L American say companies can be detrimental also, like you could say you could be funding detrimental <clears throat> things that's happening in the world by supporting the American dollar or supporting this X, Y, and Z company in the stock exchange, like, you know? That's true in prison systems and stuff like prison that. Prison right, systems right, right. Yeah, and I agree. all kinds of stuff. Yeah. It's not like every country has a clean slate. Or every company. I agree. Huh? Or even any, every company, company. I agree. has a clean slate. There is exactly. no clean company exactly. post $2 billion, right? <laughs> but <laughs> that's the number? Yeah, post two. <laughs> After yeah. we get to two, everything yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. They did something filthy. <laughs> Love you guys. Um, <laughs> But I think there's been a propaganda push to fund a lot of these companies mm -hmm. that have non-American founders for an ulterior reason. And other, we've seen it here. Other countries are a lot more strategic than we are. Literacy is a lot higher. Like I was yes. telling all the Black Brits here, I'm like, yeah, you guys are way more intelligent than most people I come across in the States. Like, you guys are brilliant. So yeah. if they're thinking 5, 10, 15 year horizon, and Putin has wanted his revenge for 15 years. This isn't new. He didn't wake up Two weeks ago, I'm like, God, now I want war. Right. We have to be very careful of the things that we fund. Speaking of ge geopolitical things, just you said something before where you said, like, how as stock guys, we watch company earnings. Mm -hmm. And you was like, you, you watch the news for, like, news report. Like, that's kind of like the company earnings is, like, what's happening. on. Like, can you talk about that? Yeah, so our economic indicators that we primarily look at, we look at GDP, consumer price index, producer price index, all pretty much like the same things that you guys look at, but we can look at- Can you say those again? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, but, but they, we got they time. And trade it. <laughs> we got, market, yeah. we got okay. time, Jess. So shout out to Dream Team, because we trade those in the bond market and- I'm trying to type it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Mike cooked this up. What are the four major <laughs> indicators? Okay, so, so our four major economic indicators we look at gross domestic product. Yes. All right. We look at consumer price index and producer price index. So yeah. how much are consumers spending? How much are producers producing? Pretty much, right? We look at non farm payroll. That's a big one. Big it comes one. out on the first Friday of every single month. Big and it one. gives us a big, big, big understanding yeah. on unemployment, employment, how many jobs were added to the market. But that's how we make most of our money. So when we look at, like, we look at everything from a macroeconomic level when mm -hmm. it happens in different economies. Now, non-farm payroll is only a U.S.-based economic indicator, but we do look at GDP of, like, let's say, Great Britain. Mm -hmm. I trade GBP USD, which is Great British Pound versus U.S. Dollar, Great British Pound versus Japanese Yen, which is GBP JPY. Mm -hmm. I trade them the most. And then I'll also trade XAU USD, which is that gold that we were just talking about. Those are the main ones that I look at. Now, you know how you guys tell people, okay, don't look at every single company, mm -hmm. only pick a few. Mm -hmm. That's how it is with us in the foreign exchange market. You don't look at every single economy, right? It's a lot to look at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you're pairing two economies against one another. Yeah. OK, mm -hmm. so we're looking at different economies, but I only trade GJ for the most part, GU and gold. So I'm always studying the Japanese yen economy, always Great Britain economy and always the euros. Fewer is better. So when I tell you guys trade the S&P 500 bond market, you're good. On the future side, 6B is a British pound. Once again, 6J is a Japanese yen. So if you pair them together, you'll be fine. But the fewer things you trade, the more you can master because there's so much money to be made on an everyday basis mm -hmm. in each of them you don't have to trade well i mean you guys companies you don't have to look at every yeah. single company yeah. to make money me i can make so much money just from like this like i said the two to three yeah. trades a week. Yeah. they have not moved off assets and liabilities yeah. <laughs> like th there's a lot of key lessons in watching what people do mm -hmm. they could have had 94 other sayings right we could have put some yes in chat. No, keep one yeah. skill. So okay. Make sure sales <laughs> take it off to the moon. So less is more when it comes to trading. So and you, mastering each thing. Because you, when you master it and you understand everything in depth, that's that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So you said you study those three, but are there any others that people should be paying attention to as well? Well, people, of course, trade the Canadian dollar. So a lot of people trade USD CAD. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of Chef Franks. I don't trade Chef Franks yeah, at cool. all. Okay. It's, that's the it's, that's the 
Oh. It's super slow. Yeah, yeah. AUD French, USD. Swiss, yeah. yeah, Swiss franc. Yeah, and slower. then you have the Australian dollar. All right. So these are just like major currencies. Okay. I don't trade AUD USD at all either. Now, I have a lot of students that trade everything in regards to, well, not everything in regards to a lot of different countries, but I just mean countries that are different from mine. Right. Mm -hmm. So they tap into those different economies. It's really just a structure, just like you guys see. How do you research mm -hmm. a company? Marking up your charts and really understanding economies are pretty much the same thing. Mm. And the same way you have the top five companies, you have top five pairs, yeah. which is just really the top five economies. So here, in Britain, Australia, right? There's a uh, uh, Japanese market. There's only a few you can trade. So mm -hmm. there are more they can trade, but it's not worth it because the liquidity is low. It's right. like trading an ETF that's like 35th best. Right. It's why like you can't it? trade yeah, it, why, but yeah, why you get it? more bank for your buck trading, you know. It's not, it's not the, at the rate it's going to grow and appreciate and appreciate. It's going to be yeah, so slow. It's not worth like, it. Right. Yeah. And then you do have exotics, like you have, you know, the Mexican peso, different things like that. I don't trade them just because I don't have to. Like, we make money from the stuff that we know the most. You know Unless saying, Trump but... gets elected again, because mm -hmm. that night the peso dropped crazy. Yeah. Other than that, <laughs> don't, don't, don't touch it. It's a good volatility trade, but outside of that. Like, people trade the Turkish lira. All these exotic pairs, you have them, but I would say stick with the major currencies yeah. because they're more, like, you can predict the price. Yeah. Right now, of course, you don't execute until you have your confirmations, but you can predict the price. I really believe that like all fundamentals line up with your technicals, but technicals give you insight to what's about to happen fundamentally. Absolutely. You don't know exactly what's going to happen that's going to cause price to shift the way it's shifting. But if you come to like, let's say a monthly or a weekly level of heavy support and resistance, mm -hmm. and you know the market's about to drop right here. We don't know what's about to make, or we don't know what's about to happen in the economy to make the drop it. it. Yeah. Something's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but something is coming. Yeah, yeah. So those those lower highs, lower lows. Yep. Yeah. Ah, uh, got you. Yeah, gotcha. and then it's just data added on top of each other, added on top of each other, back to back to back to back to back. So trading the British pounds like wearing Nikes, like trading the Turkish literally like wearing like pro kids. Never mind. Like you don't. <laughs> same, same with the top ones that are going to move the market. Yeah. Uh, Jess, you said that the non uh, foreign payroll. And so when you look at this data, what, what are the indicators that you're looking at um, to say, all right, this is a sign. This job is a sign. statistics. Okay. When how many jobs have been created? Yeah. How many have we add, how, how many have we added into the job market? So like, let's say, you know, you're expecting the number to be, I don't know, 700 and it comes in at 500, mm -hmm. right? That's going to cause the U.S. dollar to drop mm -hmm. significantly mm -hmm. because we we now have 500 less jobs that were added that mm -hmm. we expected to be in. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like all of it is it's not just price moving esoterically. Mm -hmm. It's actual why. fundamental data that aligns to tell us why price is moving. And there's a big difference between trading and gambling. You always need to understand your positions and why you're in your position. Gambling, I think a lot of people just chase money. Mm -hmm. They just take positions, chase it. They're chasing the market. You never want to chase the market. Trading is based off of actual thesis that are aligned to tell you, okay, this is going to happen because of this. And when this happens, I'm going to react to it in this way. So Ian, let's talk about some stocks. Mm -hmm. Square, mm -hmm. last week, hit rock bottom, I think it got as low as $82, I believe. Uh, but this week, it hit 25-ish, uh, 125-ish. So that's yeah, like- 126, 127 right now. Yeah, yeah. so um, yeah, looking at like a $45 increase. Yeah. Um, that's like a 50%, that was like 50% jump, pretty much, from its low of nice 80 in, in the last. So, what happened with Square to jump that quickly? I mean, uh, once certain companies of value hit so low, it's like if you sold these beautiful sweatshirts for 15 bucks. <laughs> it's like, it's, you have some deals that are so good, you cannot deny. Most people are waiting and buying 5% off the high. And I've told you guys before, wait to 45%, 43% off the high, you'll be good. I know some of you were killing me, like, man, the crystal ball broken and Square cracked it, right? They're going to be good. Jack hasn't even announced his plans for the team. So even with Peloton, they have a new CEO. Mm -hmm. Love his vision. Jack hasn't even announced what his plan is with the new team yet <laughs> of how to... Uh, Mike's, Mike's happy about, Mike's the, happy about, happy about that. <laughs> um, so when they announced that they'll be fine, but do you think a payment processor like Square is really going to fall through the floor and get back to 45 bucks? No. It's just that so much was happening in the world. Hedge funds was letting off their positions. 
how many offices is fund of funds, and then retail traders came in after that, and everything started to fall apart. But they're going to make a nice, a nice bounce. And I know some people are going to ask about the Russia trade. If you're going to swing RSX, you're going to have to hold it for four years. Like Russia could collapse. Do not touch that trade. It is not worth it. Other things you can buy. Square would definitely go back, and it should hit 180, 67, and maybe four months. So you'll be good. You'll be good. Yeah, I think they they reported their earnings and outperformed. Um, and then they got upgraded to outperform by a, a few analysts. So mm-hmm. those those type of reports always help. Even if Absolutely. somebody didn't know all the technicals, yeah. when they see a uh, firm saying, oh, yeah. outperform, it's like, okay, yeah. I guess it's safe to go back now. It's a good time. <laughs> yeah. right? And then when those companies start to fall, so like when you have, that have not hit new highs in five or six months, that is also telling you that the market is starting to taper off too. Don't look at the top. So if you look through 25 through 50 and they haven't hit new highs in like two or three months, that is a sign that the market is going to taper down as well. Yeah, there was, there was also another position, that maybe like in that beginning of January when we saw uh, NASDAQ pull back and we were like, mm-hmm. look at Microsoft sitting at 277, we yeah. had to grab it. And I said, yeah. you know, let me get, I'm gonna grab some shares here. Mm-hmm. It actually, it happened again. It happened again through, last yeah. week. So it was like, these things are happening and we're telling you, like yeah. if it gets to these numbers. So 296 now. Execute. Sweet, so, that, slow Microsoft is executed. Executed. That's that's a twenty dollars swing. Yep. On just information, if it gets to this number, grab it. Um, and so you know, we're only saying it because we're actually doing it. Yeah. Um, now, if you choose to, that that's up to you. But th- these are great entry points to have a, a company that we firmly believe in is going to be here for a long time, and it's what number is the, in the top five as yeah. far as uh. Uh, market cap, yeah, you know, and, and we both we spoke about it last year as our stock of the year. When it hits these points, we got to make sure that that we're ready to execute. If you're thinking, how often do you guys think about like, okay, what what is the business going to do over the next two days? Like, you guys are always think a long term. Mm-hmm. You all know, two three years for like ten for most people. Continue to think and At buy least. for the long term. You see, shoddy face. <laughs> Everything's and every business is the same. Forex futures, crypto. You can see crypto slid down. All markets are tied together. Mm-hmm. If you hold for the long term, you'll be good. Stop worrying. Like Russia doesn't matter. Everyone cared about inflation two and three weeks ago. No one cared. Trump election versus Biden, they cared about that. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> uh, rotation was a big thing a year ago. None of that shit matters. Transitory was the word. Of Holding the- for five <laughs> years is what matters. And Now, once again, you know it because Def Jam, Interscope, Arista back in the day, they never let an artist sign a one-year deal. It was locking everybody in for five or 10 years. You can look at other businesses to see what you should be doing in your own personal portfolio based on what they do. And you'll be good. Absolutely. <laughs> be mindful. Um, so what, what is the blueprint to master the market? I want to go over a couple of things real quick and just remind people. <laughs> talk, um, to the, talk, talk to the folks. And then we're going to let the queen chime in. So you guys want to give you a little recap. Where to get in? 72-day moving average or the yearly open? Where to get out? Number two. Hold for 30 years, five years, or when you 5X your investment, right? Number three, two tech, two index, no stress, or you want to invest in the top three in a category, right? So you don't want to invest in the 55th best podcast. You want (laughs) the one, right? Um, The three most important indicators, I told you about it before, before it became a big thing. You can check out the Cuban episode, but quantitative easing, inverted yield curve, and then 20 years in the market. The freedom satellite to make sure that you're you're protecting yourself from any drops in the market. You need a business, stocks, real estate, life insurance, your job. You need 24 revenue streams in your business. I know you're going to hate it when I say it. It feels better to have 24 streams in there, right? Risk mitigation. So you have to have good legal, good insurance. There's an omission. So if you get sued, you're fine. And then you have to have protection of all of your assets. On the future side, I want you to trade 25 contracts for the bond market. For 21 ticks, that will give you 16,406 bucks. And then the VIX levels I want you to look at is 155, 137.64, 90.68, 82.6, and 39.4. That's all investing is. I know some of you want to learn so much, but the point of investing is to own and then do. I don't want you guys to be the smartest in the room. And everyone feels like the information is equal, right? Mm-hmm. Please put yes in chat if I made you money. If anyone else has made you money at the same clip, please put them in as well. It's not about information. It's execution. Anytime I talk to her or talk to them, 
And y'all think they just party. They record nine episodes today. Well, how, many, <laughs> how many episodes in total y'all got out here? Was that today? Five. We got five in. Yeah. yeah, we got five in. It's about the doing. So when I say, hey, when you like scholarship, Apple, Microsoft, VOO, VTI, everybody in London, VWIRL. That's the world index that you can invest in. It's really that simple. There's nothing more complicated. I know some of you feel like you want to learn more, but actually learning more actually prevents you from. It's like the guys like who learn to pick up and how to talk to girls thing. But then you go to the club and they talk to no girls. <laughs> and then it's a dude with no game. Like, yo, baby, I want you. Can I, can I get you a drink? It'd yeah. be the ugly dude in the club with, with the best <laughs> girls. He's just executing, right? It's at true. A high clip, at, a high at a high clip. clip. At a high clip. At right? a high clip. Yeah. The, the name of this game is executing, not talking, not deliberating. Like, look how many people you pass up in a short period of time just by executing, learning, executing, yeah. learning, executing. It's, opposed to just learn, 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 and they never do. It's, it's the, the capability and having the willingness to mm -hmm. understand that there's always something to learn. Yeah. Um, and not just becoming overwhelmed by information and saying, okay, let me get more, let me get more, let me get more, mm -hmm. and not learning anything. Like, yeah. you feel like you got it, but... I always live by the, the the thought of if I learn something, then I should be able to teach it. Yeah. If I if I can't teach it, then I haven't really learned it um, to the level where I could actually be execute on it. So once I learn it and I execute, now let me give it to somebody else. Yeah. My cousin Rick gave me some great advice in 2007. He's like, you can post on Facebook and tell your friends, but sometimes when you post and tell your friends what you're going to do, your brain gets confused like you actually have done it. <laughs> so what you need to do is shut up and quit posting on Facebook. But shout out to the post for the memories and actually do the thing that you're saying and then let the results speak. So sometimes we can get so high off of learning fib retracements or price channel at invest fest or emails like, oh my God, I learned something new. And then men, you're going to look back in a year and your woman's going to be like, what did you learn from that? What, what, did, what do we have as a result? Mm -hmm. A bunch of knowledge, right? What is that? I can't sleep with the degrees. You can't sleep with the knowledge <laughs> yeah. of investing. It's going to, so I want, yeah. How much has your portfolio grown since you watched Market Mondays or Stock Club? And please let us see what the results are. Because yeah, a lot of people are talking about it, but they're not doing it. It's like one of those things that we always were told and taught, like now just power, but the right knowledge. It ain't even, it's, it's knowledge that's applied as power, mm -hmm. right? Because I could just hoard information. Yeah, and it has to be the right information. There's a lot of people giving it. information away that doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. That's also it's true. Real, like, here's how to build a podcast. You got nine views. Like, bro, it's not time to teach. You got to build. Like, yo. like and subscribe. Uh, I know we talked about the Russia Ukraine situation, but it, you have 10 things that, that you need to know that everybody needs to know about the market we're in right now. Yeah. Um, one, one of the biggest things geopolitically is like, I think we failed to show support to the Ukraine, but we couldn't have. But I think if Biden would have supported Ukraine a little bit earlier, I think that could have been a great rallying point. The part that I don't like is the how um, black people being treated in Ukraine. That's what I did. So I, I have complete compassion. Mm -hmm. When I see three month old babies and nine month old babies being pushed off a train. Not even well, getting access to the train. That's heartbreaking. So we have to take care of our own affairs. Secondly, I think that the stock market meme mania that happened with GameStop in last year, shot a Jorge, you made 125 grand last year off of it was created to help Robinhood's IPO. Because since then, Robinhood hasn't went up that much. Great company. But what if some of these metrics were inflated to get a higher IPO? You have to be mindful when looking at the long-term of what to invest in. Uh, unfortunately, Citadel was short Activision before Microsoft <laughs> bought it. So to my good friends over at Citadel, call me, crystal ball. I'll let you use it for a little bit, right? But it always tells you you shouldn't be short. There's really no upside benefit to be short a stock a long period of time. All right. They took a trading strategy and plotted to long-term investing. Like, why, why would you do that? Um, Russia stock market, of course, hit 45%. And this is why we always say, please do not invest in countries that are not the top three or five. Or just international investing, period. Like, even it's during tricky. my financial advising days, I always stayed away and told my clients, stay away from international funds. Mm -hmm. Because, um, A, international funds, the international market has kind of underperformed the American market Absolutely. over the last decade. But then also, it's just too volatile. Anything mm -hmm. can happen. Like, and the, the government can come and, and take control over a situation, geopolitical stuff. And it's like, when you invest internationally, you got to take that into consideration. So it was like real, real trendy a few years ago. Everybody wanted to do like international funds and mm -hmm. international stocks. But it's like- You saw what happened in China. So Luke and Coffee. 
Um, Don't do that. Why you have to point at me? No, no. Like, damn, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> You gotta be careful. Oh God, you gotta, yeah, you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful it's when you valuable lesson. when you invest in it. So me personally, I'm not really a big fan of investing in international because there's too much stuff and it's yeah. there's too many moving parts. These countries are too delicate and it's not the same as America. Yeah, I mean the information we're getting is third hand. Uh-huh. Even though we have international viewers, so love you guys. Shout out to everybody from all over the world that checks us out. And um, you know, obviously, America's not the only credible country in the world, mm-hmm. but just be mindful and understand if you invest in countries that you don't live in, especially, you know, abroad and you just kind of just hear it from your friend, like this is yeah. a good idea to invest in, you know, this country. It's yeah, study the Bovespa, the FTSE here. There's some good companies in the FTSE. Yeah. But you have to then compare and say, are they better than the top five that we have here? If not, then if Apple was founded here, I would be pro right, right, investing right. here. It's just about yeah. who's going to give me the highest. And there's some good companies like we just talked about Adidas, Puma. It's like there are good company brands that have an American stronghold that are not American companies. Mm-hmm. Pretty much every foreign car company that we could, that we think of, BMW, Mercedes, they're real good companies. Yeah. So it's like, it's not like every good company comes from America. It just so happens that the majority of the top companies are oh, American-based yeah, companies. Yeah. It's just, you know, yeah. not to say it's a bias, but it's just the world that we live in. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the top, top five market caps, fifty years from now, that might that might change. Good, yeah. but as of right now, the majority of the top companies: Tesla, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Amazon Facebook. Those are all American companies. Yeah, and then the final point: no one cares about risk management when the market is booming, but it hurts the most when the market starts to slide. So you have to be very mindful when everything is on fire and you hear everyone like, "Yo, I made nine thousand dollars in two minutes." That usually is only going to last for so long. You always have to be prepared. And I, when I'm like, hey, these prices are going to drop, and people's like, you know, you're crazy. I'm like, no, always play defense. One thing can go wrong, fighting one punch that you don't see can blind you. Like, play defense first, and then you'll be good. I know you get tempted to have such big games, but when, the people I see that get hurt the most, they got away from long term. Like, they liquidated all Apple, Microsoft indexes and did all options. So the money. Or did all features trading. Yeah. And then you get addicted to trading, as you talked about with the gambling, and then your account blows up, and now you lost long-term and your short-term profits. And now and there's a correction yeah. or a conflict. Yeah. So, Jessica, what, what's your advice on it? You said, you know, trading is not gambling, but it could, it could become synonymous Mm-mm. with gambling. Not, wait, 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 wait. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why yeah. real quick. I know okay? some gamblers, yes. So I, yeah. I know I some too. gamblers, too. <laughs> a lot of them, yeah. right? And I do not subscribe to that or them. But what I will say is, like, when it comes to trading currency, do not take a trade if you don't know why you're in it. Right. We're not just chasing the money. So you can have a lot of volatility and people have FOMO. So they'll see the market literally shifting up and they'll be like, oh, I need to buy. Why do you need to buy, though? Mm -hmm. What data is supporting you buying it? When I took that trade on Euro JPY, I literally in my mind took the trade because Japanese yen is a safe haven currency. So ultimately, I know that is going to go up. Euro, we're on European soil. There is a complete war that's happening on european territory Mm -hmm. so i am going to sell euro jpy right i had a substantial basis as to why i took that trade so there is a such thing as as of course gambling but i do not believe trading and gambling are synonymous if you take your trades based off of substantial data as to why you're taking them and executing them now of course like we talked about our technicals align with this so even when you guys ask me like i know you asked me okay what are the the plays when it comes to oil i can give that because i can see it clear as day with gold because it already hit my reversal level like i'm not going to sit here and be like oh gold is going to do this right now because in the foreign exchange market and i know people listening to me i'm not about to tell you to place this position right now when i know you could lose a lot of money if you don't understand your pullback in your entries. Right now, gold is literally sitting at a weekly and a monthly level, which means there's a lot of consolidation in those two points. So what it's doing is literally ranging between 1881 and 1927. But once it breaks out of that, I have it going to 2050. Yeah. Right. So, but also it's a daily trend line that's under there. So like, it's kind of real technical based in regards to that. But the, when you said like even holding long term, mm-hmm. You can hold long term if you understand why that's happening when it comes to forex. Yeah. Only when it comes to forex because you're dealing with two different economies. So two different economies, anything can happen at any given time. And I know you said don't invest in companies internationally, but when you understand 
I agree. Don't invest in companies internationally. <laughs> but currency wise, right, we can make money off of those movements. Not we got sure. 70 to 100 pips a day, yeah. 100 pips on 10 standards. Even when we talked about yeah. that, especially because we have leveraged positions, 10 standards on 100 pips is literally $10,000. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And if you understand why you're in that position, you make money from that position. But my number one rule to invest in is always understand where you are in the market. Mm -hmm. Technical broad picture. Yeah. Always understand where you are in the market. Again, don't get caught up on minor structure and the smaller time frame so much that you don't understand the bigger time frame. But also don't get caught up only in the bigger time frame that you're negating your entries and just hopping in wherever because entries are important. Mm -hmm. Right. And then it's no different than understand where you are in the economic cycle. Yeah. Exactly. Have an inter interposition before you know, you uh, know, exit. Yeah. A whole lot of game. Troy, before we wrap, what are you, what stocks are you looking at? I know you, you recently uh, purchased yeah, yeah. Disney. Yeah, Disney. And, you know, how's that I, working out? I, it's doing pretty well. Um, the price. Uh, I think I got it at 142. Um, so I had an interposition at around 160. I had a call at 160. Uh, obviously, it, it fell back. Um, and then I got back in into a 155 uh, position, 155 call for, for January 23. Um, and that's been doing well. CrowdStrike, um, one of those companies, obviously, cybersecurity was one of those those sectors that I, I hadn't had an investment in. Um, and so I said, this is a prime uh, position to be in. I spoke to Trap about that. I know he loves CrowdStrike. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, even with the market pullback, uh, those two have been doing well. Live Nation. Drinks on you for CrowdStrike. <laughs> <laughs> Live Nation uh, yeah. reported um, a couple, maybe last week. Uh, and I've been talking about that for over maybe yeah. two years. Yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously with uh, COVID, prayerfully, um, you know, being the restrictions being pulled back and the amount of uh, cases being dropped. I think we got over, over 80% decline in positive cases in the United States. Um, you can see people going back outside and going back to these live events. And so that was, those are some of the companies I've been talking about and to see what patients can do yeah. um, when you just believe in, in a company and um, their fundamentals is what could happen. Yeah. I know like John Deere at 327, it's at 360 now. Um, companies that actually, here's an interesting concept. Companies that actually make products that people love and buy consistently will do very well. 2020, everyone, was, like we had Jeremy Lin across all markets. <laughs> Shout out to Jeremy Lin. Shout out to Jeremy. But now we get to see. It was Lin Sanity. Who really can play. Yeah. So what companies have good leadership, good business model, good structure. Um, the, the ones that are best are rising to the top and the ones that were horrible just now falling apart. And who, who's going to be D Booker, right? Who's going to be Devin Booker in this yeah. game, right? Like the guy that's going to give you quietly just average 26 a game. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All-star, like. That's that type of consistency. Because, um, you, you, I mean, shout out to Lucidity. Yeah. He lit it up for seven games. Um, and had a career. Had yeah, a, had a good career. career. Just, you know, it wasn't what the, what it was in, in uh, the Garden for those seven, seven games. It was longer than seven games. That when was it 14? It was like two months, like eight weeks, six weeks, at least six weeks. Six at least weeks. six Yeah, six week run. Uh, yeah, six week run. Was that a contract year? Yes, it was. But was it was in New York? Yes. He's playing for yeah, six weeks. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Him seven. He was on the cover of Time magazine. Yeah. <laughs> like, because, that's of, legend. because of, because of who he did legend. it against. Uh -huh. No, no, no. It, that, but then also just this whole story. He the was, story is incredible. He yeah. was killing for a month, at least a month. That could be seven games? No, it was longer than seven games. <laughs> it was a longer, it was longer than Put seven games. Put in chat how many games Jeremy Lin it was, it was killed for. Yeah. But do you want Jeremy Lin or try to be LeBron? I'm going to get credit <laughs> to your guy. I'm going to pick Michael. Even in that debate, when we go to my, Macros, what do we talk about first? The history of their career. That's looking at the entirety of this market. We didn't talk about one game versus one game. We went to, through the history. Right. So anything, asset you want to invest in, look at the entirety of it. For real estate, it's comps. It's the same thing. Look at the entire span and you should know what to invest in based on that. Wow, this is so great. Uh, it's so great because like, even when he said like, you know, to buy the vits and stuff like that, like, I'm like, wait, like everything is so it. many things yeah. that's like so aligned. Yeah. It's so many things that's so aligned. Even when he was talking about like buy bonds right now, like that's what you're supposed yeah. to do. You know what I'm saying? Where where is the big money putting their money? Where's it? Yeah, that please write them down. Money. Follow the money. There's a hundred ways you can trade, but only really one or two ways to make money. Where's the big money putting their money? That's that's what you need to understand. Mm -hmm. Where's the big money putting their money? And if the big money? money isn't there, it doesn't matter. Follow the money. And then when it comes to currency, bonds is what gives currency its value. Bonds are yeah. promissory notes. 
I'm glad you said that, Proud of, because even when we were showing, um, especially with these companies, mm -hmm. how much of the company is institutional investment mm -hmm. versus retail investment? Can I be honest? There's no such thing as a powerful retail trader. <laughs> I know you don't want to hear, but go look at the ones who worked at Goldman Citadel, JP Morgan, worked at, in government, who traded these things up out of their personal accounts and then said they were retail traders. We lived a real life episode of Billions in 2020 and 20, even with how they destroyed Kathy and all that, like, come on, man. like it's not, there's not enough people to, to come together to move a market like that when you have governments and family offices with 300 billion on the low end to put into a market. A lie always sounds better though. <laughs> Diplomatic community. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, another legendary episode live from London. Mm -hmm. um, any final words for the people? I just want to say thanks for having me on. No, nah, I don't. You know uh, what I'm saying? Like, it's shit, definitely been a vibe. And like you said, and I want to just piggyback off mm -hmm. of what he said really quickly in regards to like, in order to trade, it's going to require you to be a higher version of yourself. I even talked about this at my event because a lot of people say, I want to make money, I want to make money, I want to make money, but don't have the discipline <sighs> to actually achieve making money like mm -hmm. trading is hard like yeah. i'm not even gonna sugarcoat it and yeah. act like it's not but it's 100 achievable but you have to structure mm -hmm. you have to have a trading plan you have to know how much money you're trying to make from the market mm -hmm. at all points in time you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying so just do everything you need to do to be a better version of yourself and everything else would align with that yeah because the key is consistency can i ask you how many interviews you guys missed that you have planned out here that you guys didn't show up to? No. no. And the consistency is what compounds your account. Absolutely. Stop trying to hit a home run overnight. Like compounding your account, I think so many people just don't even realize how much mm -hmm. or how important that is. Compounds your account. Yeah, Compound it at whatever bar, percentage yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's in tired. Everyone's been out, right? Yeah. Everyone still showed up to do the job. That's what really makes you. Everyone's looking for an indicator. The indicator is like being the best you. And it sounds like some Gary V, Deepak Chopra type shit, right? <laughs> but that's that is it. I Go tell on. I tell my students that all the time. Like indicators, it's it's fluff. Learn it. You're just trying to take a short way out. Once again, I ask everybody in here: How many people do you know made two to three million dollars trading off an indicator? Silencio. <laughs> and these guys are the MVPs for being able to party like Diddy <laughs> and still shoot content like Steve Harvey. That's it. I don't know <laughs> publicly like how like you do it. Ian, 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 we, we, uh, intern Ian got fired day one. Fired. Troy, I'm going to help you out at 8 o'clock. Boy, <laughs> God was like, my son. Yeah, I, yeah. Up. 10, I do not. 10, no, 30, I, do. I just woke up. I, I, Bro. You could fire me. Yeah, this, this, <laughs> this, is, the, this, this, this is the most that I've gone. I think we went out every I was talking about Dula yesterday. Like, yeah, we went out every single night. As legend within itself, I never did that. Like that was like a six <laughs> six night run of staying out till four o'clock in the morning every night and still getting up to do the work. Still got to do it. Yeah, shout out to the lobby it. boys. But you know what? We we we, we spoke <laughs> the lobby boys. Are in oh yeah, we we spoke to uh, <laughs> we spoke to Anton Dixon Bellot. So he is um a kind of comparable to the Tyler Perry of UK, mm. and um he was saying like you know people always ask like what separates you from everybody else like. He was like, just the main thing is just the consistency. He was like, I don't look at it like it's a job. He's like, I just look at it like this is my, my daily routine that I have. Mm -hmm. to, it's, it's just in me. Like, you know what I'm He's like, I don't, it's no yeah. like, it's, it's no like days off. It's no like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to sleep on my phone. Da -da -da. Like, I'm just used, I'm just built for it. Like, you know what I mean, he was like, when you start looking at it like it's a chore or it's even optional or you have to do it or you don't have to do it, that's when, but it's like when it becomes wired in your brain that it's yeah. like brushing your teeth. Yeah. That's you don't bad. even think about it. You just get yeah. dressed. You, you put on your clothes. You don't think about, do I have to put my clothes on today? Can yeah. I go outside naked? Like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like, what else good. are you going to be doing besides yeah. that in a day? Like, yeah, that, you know you're doing is that. what's going to get you paid. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. After we left tape, first thing I did was four o'clock in the morning, got on the charts, three hours. Like, you got to treat this like a craft. Like, shout out to Mike. Bam, I love you. <laughs> oh, you an apology. <laughs> my guy. But every, toots, they, everybody's doing their job all the time. Yeah, yeah. That's the key. And if you do that, for me, it's been 12, 13 years. You'll get it. That's what's it. They, they, there's one thing that they won't do. What? Outwork us. Oh, no. They won't. But you can benefit from our labor. <laughs> by investing in 2Tech2 Index and watching Market Mondays.
That's I love fact. you guys. That's a fact. That's a fact. Earners, Red Panda family, uh, again, we want to let y'all know about a great choice if you're looking to bank or invest. Our folks at Ally are the leading digital financial service company with passionate customer service and innovative uh, financial solutions and are relentlessly focused on doing it right for both customers and our community. So get with Ally so you can save, invest, and spend on the things that matter to you most. For everything we need, we're all better off with an ally. Shout out to the team over there. We will see y'all in the, in the very soon. Very soon. And, and shout out to everybody once again in London. Shout out to everybody in France. We met a gentleman from Germany, Berlin. Mm -hmm. So he said Berlin is tapped in heavy. Mm -hmm. So European takeover. So Netherlands. Rotterdam. Yep. So Reese. Yep. Yeah. European takeover. Mine's gone clear. <laughs> um, the global, global takeover is on the way. And that's been, I've been saying that since day one. Global vision, global vision, global vision. And then it's like, you know, I don't know if people really thought that we were serious about it, but. Yeah, I'm not sure. I feel like when we went to the breakfast club, they were like, uh, well, what's the goal? And uh, I was like, world domination. Yeah. They're like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm like, nah, like, this is real. Like, yeah. this message is bigger than us. Yeah. There's, there's so many people that need it. And so when the gentleman was talking to us from uh, Berlin, he was like, there were no mentors for us. There were no voices for us. But watching y'all, it makes me realize that I need to go grab some young, some people yeah. and start teaching them and putting them on the game. So we're going to try to get to as many places as possible because the message needs to be spread. And if that's what we've been bestowed upon to do, mm -hmm. we're definitely going to show up. And we're going to have a good time doing it. Absolutely. <laughs> Most importantly. <laughs> the road show continues. Once again, guys, check out Ruben Harris's episode tomorrow. Extremely dope, brother. Very high level conversation. Very informative. Guaranteed to learn something. Uh, tap in, follow our TikTok, yes. EYL University TikTok and EYL University YouTube pages. And um, yeah, that's it, man. Thank you guys. Salute. Good night from London. Cheerio. Cheerio. It's all one through nine. Au revoir. Ciao. 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 Later. Peace.